Well, it was a good few months ago that I uploaded the unboxing video for the Ultimate Sporter, and way back then I promised you that I'd do a full review on this gun. And I know it's taken a really long time, but I think it will be well worth the wait. I'm not a fan of doing reviews based on first impressions. I like to get to know a rifle intimately before I review it, and that is exactly what I've done for this gun. Now, those of you that have been following my Facebook page will be saying, hey, hold on a second, you've already done a review of this rifle, and you'd be correct. If you want to see a short to the point review, go check out this one on Air Arms TV. I filmed this about a month ago, and this will give you a good overview of what this gun is all about. However, on this channel, I wanted to go into a little bit more detail. Now, the very first thing that I did when considering what to include in this review was to write down a list of things that I thought every air gun review should cover, and this is what I came up with. First of all, what we'll be covering in this episode, the overview and features. In no particular order, mechanics and build quality, how well is this thing put together? Ergonomics, is it comfortable to shoulder? How well is the stock shaped and designed? Weight and weight distribution, is this something you want to lug around all day or is it destined to the bench? Trigger and magazine, is this a match grade trigger and how well does the magazine cycle? Loudness, is the shroud effective enough to make this gun backyard friendly? And practicality, what is this rifle best suited to? So that'll all be covered in this video. And then in part two, we'll look at the performance of this rifle. In other words, muzzle velocity and energy, consistency, shot count, optimum full pressure, optimum power and accuracy. So let's get started, shall we? The first thing you'll notice when you look at this gun is that it is freaking beautiful. You don't have to look twice to realize that a lot of thought, a lot of research and a lot of effort went into the design of this thing. The mechanics of this rifle are exactly the same as the S510 Extra, which is a rifle that's been around for years and has stood the test of time. Features include a fully shrouded barrel, an air cylinder, a fully adjustable two-stage trigger, manual safety, side lever cocking, adjustable power, and a 10-shot magazine. So what you see on the gun itself is essentially exactly the same as the S510 Extra, but it's a stock that makes this rifle truly unique. It's not just beautiful, but it does a particular job and it does it very, very well. The stock is made by Manelli in Italy, it's the same company that makes stocks for Daystate and BSA, so there's no question about quality. And there's actually a lot to talk about when it comes to the features that the stock has to offer. And that brings us to our next point, ergonomics. This is where the Ultimate Sporter outclasses a lot of other air guns. The almost infinite adjustability of the stock means that this gun is going to be very comfortable to shoulder no matter what shape you are. For a start, the fore end of the stock is easy to hold on to. The stippling is exactly where it needs to be and the various curves and indentations mold very well to your hand. The cheek piece is not only adjustable for height but also has a rail for forward, backward and side to side adjustment and a ball and socket joint which allows you to tilt or rotate the cheek piece. If that's not enough, the butt pad can be moved up and down, sideways and even backwards with the use of spacers. In a nutshell, what this rifle has to offer is a target platform on a hunting rifle. The obvious downside is that this rifle is quite heavy and quite chunky and that's obviously something I don't like. Um, if you want a more simple setup, the S510 in beech or walnut will give you a much more traditional feel and at a cheaper price. And I really like the way that the, the beech and walnut stocks on the S510 hug that air cylinder. It's really, really cool. As for weight and weight distribution, this gun measures up at 3.4 kilograms unscoped, which is pretty heavy for a cylinder gun. That being said though, you do have to remember that there's a lot of metal in the stock take that into consideration and this gun isn't doing too badly. Because of the extended air cylinder and barrel, the weight distribution is quite far forward. If you want the 12 foot pound version, you can expect a much more compact package. Despite the length and the weight, the good news is that the shroud does an excellent job of keeping the gun really quiet, thanks to a series of baffles and a couple exhaust ports near the breech block. This means that the noise levels are quite acceptable and a silencer isn't really needed. If you do want one, however, the shroud is threaded, which means you can add an external moderator like the Air Arms Q-Tech. This will make the gun pretty long, but will also ensure that it stays absolutely dead quiet. I have yet to hear an air rifle as quiet as the Ultimate Sporter and Q-Tech combination. With the silencer fitted, this rifle becomes the perfect tool for picking off pests at long range. I would know that from experience. I would like to add that while the weight of this gun can be a bit of a bummer, it's actually really, really good for accuracy. Have you ever wondered why in all the different disciplines of competition shooting, they don't have a minimum weight, but they have a maximum weight? That's because the heavier a gun is, the less likely it is to move around when you're trying to aim. That makes this a really good gun for target shooting and a really good gun for bench rest shooting. If you don't like a heavy gun, you can always get something like the Air Arms TDR. This is a gun I'll be doing a review of soon. 
Um, this is basically the same gun as the Ultimate Sporter, but in a much smaller, much more compact tactical package. And it's really light. So I would not use this gun for target shooting, for example, but it's really nice to carry around in the field. That's what's nice about these guns, is that they're designed for specific purposes. This gun, the Ultimate Sporter, is a pretty, pretty good all-round gun because it gives you that adjustability, which means that you can use it when you're shooting off a bench and it's extremely accurate, and then you can take it out, out in the field, fit a sling and bipod, and you can use it for whatever you want to. You can adjust the power down, you can turn the power up. It's an all-purpose rifle. The stock is fitted with front and rear swivel studs and an accessory rail, which means you can easily fit a bipod and take super steady shots at long range. If, however, you are stalking through the woods, you can take the silencer off, fit a sling, and walk very comfortably through dense vegetation. So let's take a look at the mechanics of the rifle, shall we? Starting with the magazine. This has to be one of the simplest, most reliable magazine systems out there, in my opinion. It's basically an aluminium drum in a plastic casing with 10 pellet slots. You drop the pellets in one by one and the magazine is cycled mechanically when you pull the side lever back. This system has never failed me. The entire loading mechanism is extremely smooth and I've never jammed this magazine in the four years I've been using it. No, it's not as high tech as some of the other magazine systems out there, but as with most components of this rifle, it's withstood the test of time and I don't think there are many people out there that would be able to fault this magazine system. This rifle does have adjustable power that can be locked into place, but I'm going to rather cover that in part two when I talk about consistency, optimum velocity, etc, etc, because the power setting obviously has a direct result on all of these things. Next, let's take a look at the trigger. It's highly adjustable. You can basically set it to wherever you want it, and it's incredibly smooth. Undoubtedly one of the best triggers out there, but it's also one of the ugliest thanks to that visible spring at the back. The manual safety is also located in the trigger, a lot of people don't like the safety. I actually think it's very practical and effective. I've never had any issues such as firing the gun instead of engaging the trigger, and neither should you if you're used to it. But I can certainly understand why people would criticize the location of the safety switch. Filling this rifle is absolutely effortless if you have an air tank. I have heard a number of people saying that they don't like the quick fill fitting that this gun uses, and one review I saw actually went as far as saying that it's not a quick fill system at all. Now, I understand that it would be nice if all PCP air guns used a standardized fill system, but to be completely honest with you, I actually way prefer this fitting to the standard Foster fitting. That is the fitting that most people would call the standard one. Why? Well, because I've had a number of Foster fittings jam up. The one that came with my Daystate Wolverine, for example, was really not made very well, and that's a problem you'll never have with the air arms adapter because there are no moving parts whatsoever. In fact, if I could change out all the full adapters on all of my rifles to this one, I would do that. But remember, this is just my personal preference and you may have a very different opinion. In wrapping up a rather detailed and rather long part one, let's talk about practicality. Now, just looking at this gun and all its potential for fine tuning, it's very clear that this would make an excellent target gun. You'll be able to see just how accurate this gun really is in part two. I think it would be a real shame if this gun was confined to the bench. This is a hunting rifle through and through, and if you can take full advantage of all the options that the stock gives you, you have a keeper, I can tell you that. If you're looking for an all-purpose gun, you don't get much better than this. Staying on the topic of practicality, I really like the fact that this gun is very easy to maintain. Now, I know that some people would say that it's better to just send your rifle into a service center every now and again, rather than trying to do it yourself, and I agree, but you've got to remember that not everyone has access to an air arms technician that knows what he's doing. Living in South Africa, this can be a real problem for me. The closest PCP air gun service center is over a thousand kilometers away, so I service my rifle myself, and thanks to the way it's designed, this is incredibly easy. The same can't be said about a lot of other brands of air guns which aren't made to be easily taken apart. Now, there aren't many negative things I can say about this rifle, but there are a few things I would change. For one, the shroud is, is pretty much glued on. It's very difficult to take off without damaging something. This makes it very difficult to clean the barrel or to access the internals. I do wish that the shroud could be easily removed like it is on most other shrouded rifles. Lastly, again from a maintenance point of view, I don't like the bluing on the air cylinder. It not only makes fingerprints stand out, but it's a nightmare trying to keep it from corroding. I live on the coast where the air is quite salty, and if I don't have a thin layer of oil on the cylinder at all times, I'm almost guaranteed to find spots of rust appearing after a few days. If you're really diligent in wiping down the air cylinder every time you use the gun, it won't be a problem, but it shouldn't have to be that way. If you spend this much money on a gun, you want to know that it can withstand the elements. And that's all for part one. I won't overload you with too much information. Let this one soak in a bit, and then when you're ready, check out the next one.
In part two, we'll look at just how well this rifle performs. Are all these features just a gimmick or does this rifle really live up to the hype? It will be quite a long in-depth video, but I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by the results. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.